I know the question burning in the back of your mind is why are there some radioactive isotopes and why are some isotopes stable? So what would make a particular isotope stable or unstable? Based on this what? Half-life. Half-life? Well, why would they have a half-life, okay? So now we, to do answer this, we gotta think about what keeps a nucleus together. So what's in the nucleus? Protons. What else? And neutrons. All right, so let's just think of helium. Okay, helium has two protons, two neutrons. All right. So this is helium's nucleus. What do we know about protons? They're positively charged. And when we talked about the atomic, or the structure of the atom, we said uh, the protons and neutrons are in a nucleus, right? Mm -hmm. And what did we say about the relative size of the nucleus? Was that taking up a lot of room in the atom or a small room? Small. small. The nucleus is very densely packed. Okay? They're very tightly packed together. So if protons are positive, and they're very tightly packed in this nucleus, what should they do to each other? To each other? To each other. Oh, it is. They should repel each other. Okay, they repel each other. And they do. They definitely do. Protons repel each other through that positive charge. Will that make the nucleus bigger? Well, no, it doesn't make it expand. Eventually, what it's going to do is it's going to cause them to break down if there's not enough attractive force. Okay? So protons repel each other through charge. And that is a force, right? A charge, attraction, or repulsion is a force. And of course that comes from a force of nature. Charge, attraction, or repulsion is from the electromagnetic force, right? The electromagnetic force. All right, so protons definitely repel each other through charge. So now we got to think about what could possibly hold them together. And it turns out that it's another force. Do you know? It's another uh, uh, force of nature. There's four forces of nature. Yeah, gravity. We're all pretty familiar with that. That's an attractive force through mass. That's me being attracted to Earth. I wasn't just dancing. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the. That's my gravity dance. Like I'm stuck here on Earth because of the attraction uh, to the Earth, and that's an attractive force due to mass. Electromagnetic force is an attractive and repulsive force through charge. The other two forces, the other two forces um, are nuclear forces. That's why we usually do, we don't come across them very often in other, you know, in a everyday life or in science classes until we start talking about the nucleus. And it turns out those can be explained by the fact, the simple fact that the protons are not fundamental particles or they're not elementary particles. Does anybody know what that means? What does it mean when it's saying they're not fundamental? Kind of a physics term, so I thought I'd throw it in here. They're made by something else. Protons are not a subunit or your our building, uh, quote unquote, building block of nature. Things make up protons. And what makes up each proton are three fundamental particles called quarks. So if you could zoom in and look at a proton, it turns out that it is made up of two up quarks and one down quark, quark, Q-U-A-R-K. All right, and each proton is made up of those.
And guess what? Quarks have attractive and repulsive forces as well. Turns out that up quarks are attracted to down quarks, and down quarks are attracted to up quarks, and we call that force the strong nuclear force. So it is different. There's not a one-to-one -one ratio. You're right there. But we'll see how we can get around that, too, in a little bit. So quarks attract each other through the strong force. It's technically called the strong nuclear force, but most people just call it the strong force. It turns, out, it turns out that uh, at very small distances, like nuclear distances, uh, the strong force is really strong. Okay? It falls off very quickly. The, if protons are far apart, it fades very quickly with distance. But when they're really close together, like very densely packed in the nucleus, it's very strong. And so essentially what happens is, yeah, the protons repel each other because of their charge, but they're held together by the strong nuclear force, the attraction between the quarks. And then whether or not a isotope is stable or unstable is just which one's stronger. Is the strong force, the attractive force stronger? I'm going to be stable. If the repulsion force through electromagnetic force is stronger, I'm going to be unstable. Eventually, the nucleus is going to break down, it's going to decay, it's going to have a fission reaction. All right. Uh, so you mentioned, yeah, there's more up and down quarks, but that's because protons are two up and two down. What else is in the nucleus? Neutrons. Neutrons are also in the nucleus. And it turns out that they are the same type of particles as protons. They're made up of quarks. <coughs> but they are made up of two down quarks and one up. Yep, so they even out. So then they shouldn't be moving at all. Well, we'll talk about that. Okay, so a neutron is two down quarks and one up. And so what else what do we know about the neutron? Befo it's neutral. All right, so adding neutrons to the nucleus brings more strong force, the attractive force, without bringing any electromagnetic charge. So it adds more attraction through strong force, but it doesn't bring any more repulsion through charge. So that helps keep uh, nuclei together. So that explains why there's neutrons in the nucleus. It helps keep them together, all the nucleons, the different protons and neutrons. And it turns out that as you add more and more protons, that repulsion force starts to build. It starts to get higher. The more protons in there, the more pro positive charges you stuff in that nucleus, the more the repulsion is going to be. So as the atomic number increases, you continually need to add more and more neutrons to keep them together. And that's why you see the ratio of neutrons to protons given in this chart is not a one-to-one -one ratio and actually increases the higher the atomic number is. At low, small elements like carbon, carbon-12, very stable isotope, six protons, six neutrons, one-to-one -one ratio. Right? So it only needs six neutrons to keep it stable. Whereas mercury, mercury-200, it's a stable isotope with 80 protons stuffed in there, 80 plus one stuffed in there, all trying to push apart. It needs 120 neutrons to keep it stable. And so that's why the mass numbers just keep on going up and up and up, and you keep on adding more and more neutrons the higher, uh, for the higher atomic mass uh, elements. All right, uh, so there's repulsion through the uh, electromagnetic force, attraction through the strong force, but eventually, you know, we run out of elements, and then past bismuth, they're all radioactive, so something else must be keeping these unstable. We just can't keep adding more and more neutrons, keeping them together. And that's because there's also a repulsion force and strong force. 
If an up and down quark attract each other, what do you think two up quarks do? They repel each other. All right. So there's also additional repulsion uh, from the strong force that eventually makes every uh, element uh, isotope unstable. So this region where we do have uh, stable isotopes is called the Valley of Stability, and that's a stable configuration of protons and neutrons that keeps the nucleus stable. Now it turns out, uh, just like everything I think I talk about, it's a little bit more complicated than this. All right. um, so we talked about electron configurations in general chemistry one. We had electrons in energy levels and sublevels, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, so remember all that fun stuff? Well, it turns out that protons and neutrons also exist in energy levels. And so there are also stable configurations of protons and neutrons, not just through charge and re, uh, charge repulsion and strong force attraction. There's also more stable configurations, um, like the octet rule. Okay, the octet rule uh, is a stable configuration for electrons. There's stable configuration for uh, nuclei, and they're often called magic numbers. All right, there's magic numbers of isotopes that just happen to be sta uh, stable configuration. Your book talks about it a little bit. I'm not going to uh, worry about it, but they do exist. And then there's really stable isotopes that are called doubly magic. Isn't it? That's pretty cool. They're doubly magic. They're super stable. And so there's doubly magic numbers. There's magic numbers. Uh, doubly magic. Right. OK, so uh, just other side points about quarks. Um, this is why, the reason why protons and neutrons uh, have the charges that they do is that quarks have fractional charges, right? Uh, up quarks have a positive two-thirds charge, and a down quark has a negative one-third charge. So sum, you get plus one. A two down quarks with negative one-thirds and a positive two-thirds, they're neutral. That's where that charge comes from. And there's actually six quarks, six quarks in nature, right? in nature. Nope. So up and down quarks are the only quarks that make protons and neutrons. But there's other quarks out there that exist in nature or can be produced in nature. OK, so you ready? So there's up and down in the nucleus. Okay. There's top, bottom, strange, and charmed. Those are the six charmed. Strange and Charmed are strange. I think it was given that name because it uh, lasts a lot longer than they predicted. I think that's the story. Something's weird about it. And so they go, hey, that's a strange, that's a strange quirk. Hey, Bob, let's name it Strange. Like, high five, Bob. And then Charmed, I forget. There's a story behind Charmed, too, but I forget it. Yeah, I don't know. Top and bottom, I don't know. Physicists are uh, a little bit more out there than chemists. They come up with some crazy thing. Like chemists, they're like, we have like systematic naming of everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, we try. C and K. I mean like naming molecules. Like we have oh. rules for naming molecules. Wait till you get to organic. Okay. One, two, dipentanol. Okay. It's fun. Physicists are like, yeah, strange. Up. Down. Top, bottom. OK, so there's also force carrying particles. So every single force has a force carrying particle. Like the electromagnetic force, it's force carrying particles, the photon light. That's very, very useful. Gravity's theoretical force carrying particle is called the graviton. Because gravity is such a weak force, we haven't detected it. I don't know if we ever will, but it's theorized. Strong nuclear force, I'm not making this up, it's force carrying particle is, well, the strong nuclear force keeps the protons and neutrons together, right? So it's called the glue-on. Yeah, it's the glue-on. That, that may be a bonus question. It's the glue-on, right? And then the fourth, uh, fourth nuclear, or fourth force, we don't, I don't, I mean, it doesn't pop up in chemistry. It's called weak nuclear force, and it mediates beta decay, which we'll talk about beta decay, what that is. But its force carrying particles are the W and Z bosons. It actually has two, isn't it? 
All right. Good stuff. All right, so that's what keeps a uh, nucleus stable or unstable. It's all about whether or not you've got more attraction through the strong force or repulsion through electromagnetic force. All right, so um, we call that area where we have these um, stable isotopes called the valley of uh, uh, stability. It turns out we're still uh, trying to synthesize new elements. And one of the reasons we are, and I think it's pretty cool, here's a little video from Nova. I'm not going to show it a little bit long, but um, about super heavy elements. So it's theorized, so these are theoretical calculations that past, okay, we call them super heavy elements, like past 162, 180, like 248 plus 48. So we're talking about mass numbers of around 300. Um, we should have stable isotopes again where they theoretically should be stable. So we could potentially, because right now all the synthetic elements we're uh, producing have really short half life so obviously we can't use them for anything. They're just not, we're not going to have macroscopic samples of them anyways. But eventually we should be able to create super heavy elements that are stable and that might have really awesome uses like batteries or superconducting magnets or, I don't know, 